what's up everybody welcome back to exotic astrology again and today many of you have been requesting me for speaking something on how to overcome the challenges that we encounter in our spiritual journey and as well as in our material journey but in this video i will specifically focus on spiritual path and spiritual obstacles <laughs> although there is nothing like spiritual obstacles but you can call them obstacles in the spiritual path okay and if you are new to the channel and you have not yet subscribed then please subscribe to it and if you like this video click the thumbs up and share it with those who you know are struggling to give up things or they are struggling to go ahead in their spiritual life yes and if you want a consultation then please approach me through my website the link is there in the description below and as i always say god is there with you all the time just look to him and he will be there let me maximize this all right there you go so what do you mean by obstacles in spiritual path obstacles in spiritual path are simply those allurements <laughs> which tell us that you don't need to go there you were better off earlier without this yes that is what is an obstacle which tries to pull us down yes or it stops our progress ahead and we have to understand why this happens because we are not fully purified inside we are not totally pure that is why we are facing obstacle after obstacle after obstacle yes so in this video i will talk of obstacles which we face inside so there are obstacles which come from the outside and there are obstacles which we inside uh, face yes so in the scriptures there's this talk of the shudder repose yes we have lust anger greed pride envy and illusion kama krodha lobha moha matsarya <laughs> i think i spoke some of them okay so these six are known as anarthas yes so that means till the time we have these six elements inside us till that time our internal spiritual journey will be consisting of breaks which means we will go ahead then we'll stop we'll go ahead stop go ahead stop as in hindi they say na gaadi ruk ruk ke chal rahi hai so that is why we do not make rapid spiritual progress we make stunted spiritual progress yes so today we will not discuss on all the six we will first discuss on one of them what is that let's discuss on nv my goodness matsara so there are there are various levels actually to this no? there there is uh, matsarya is like the worst it's like the highest level okay so there are four kinds of lsc nv or jealousy whatever you say so that we'll discuss some other time but here i am talking of nv in general all right so nv is basically what nv is nothing but indirect appreciation for somebody should i repeat nv is nothing but indirect appreciation for somebody all right for something which they have which you think is very valuable which you don't have not necessarily that is valuable but you think that it is very valuable and when you don't have that and that person has it you are actually saying oh man that's good you have it <laughs> but the problem is you have it i don't have it there you see so basically what happens when we are envious of somebody we try to pull that person down yes it's like the crab mentality we feel that oh why is that person having i should also have i will pull that person down yes and basically what is jealousy jealousy is a passive form of envy yes jealousy means you are simply jealous of a person which means you simply hate that person because he has something which you do not have but you don't do anything which means it's just a matter of heart you are just jealous inside yes so you don't do anything to snatch that thing from the person or destroy the person's image but envy is not like that envy is much 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 more severe envy is a direct or it is a aggressive expression of your jealousy which means 
the difference between envy and jealousy is that when you are jealous you don't do anything but when you are envious you do things to pull the person down it's like the highest form of jealousy your jealousy has crossed such an extent that you cannot tolerate you cannot tolerate seeing that person happy and you are like i will pull that person down i will spoil his or her image or i will try to destroy that person or in most case kill also yes why all these killings happen i mean yes that can happen for financial reasons but many a times it's just because you are envious of the person yes you want that person to die that is why you are doing all this so in the scriptures this demon named shishupal exemplifies the quality of envy yes so every demon or every quality is exemplified by one one demon rakshas so uh, here shishupal exemplifies this quality of envy matsara now why does he exemplify this because he was an epic example of how a envious person behaves yes who was he envious of pause this video and write it in the comments tick tick 1 2 3 ting tong times up he was always envious of nobody other than lord krishna 24 hours the only thing he cultivated was envy hatred jealousy and thereby he created trouble only for himself <laughs> not for anybody else only for himself yes so because of that what happened the only thing he he would do is wherever he would go he would criticize lord krishna or he would blaspheme him or whenever he would see lord krishna he would always insult him directly in public yes and somehow lord krishna had given a boon to his mother that till the time he doesn't complete 100 insults <laughs> i will not take his life yes and what he used to do is he used to insult 99 times and then he used to stop yes but one day there was this rajasuya yagya of maharaj yudhishthir where lord krishna was made the agra purush so in that what happened shishupal went and then shishupal could not tolerate that my greatest enemy is getting this position and he was envious for no reasons <laughs> he just hated lord krishna for 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 no reason yes only thing he would do is he would find faults with lord krishna always he would find faults and then what would happen he used to criticize insult him and thereby his sins would go up yes and then one day this rajasuya yagya was there and then he went there and he saw that krishna is getting this high position high post high respect of the agra purush which means he was the person who was honored the first before honoring everybody else yes and there are the great sages like vyas dev and so many parshuram and bhishma pitama everybody was sitting so bhishma pitama said that lord krishna has to be worshiped first yes and nobody objected to it because everybody knew he is the supreme personality of god it is god himself so nobody objected but then this shishupal came and he insulted nakul he said oh how dare you do this na it seems you have lost your intelligence and then bhishma pitama spoke to him that nobody has a problem why do you have a problem or why do you seem to have a problem <laughs> and then he said to bhishma pitama that oh you are only uh, appointing this person na you are only suggesting that this person be worshiped like god but uh, he is not god yes he is nobody actually i know why you are doing this because the truth is you are important yes and because of that you did not marry and people think that you were a very great personality you took the vow of celibacy but let me tell you the truth is you are important you are powerless you are helpless <laughs> and to hide your impotency you stayed without getting married yes so he said you are like a napunsak now for a chatriya like bhishma to hear that somebody calls him that you are important you can't imagine <laughs> but bhishma did not react bhishma was calm yes because he knew that lord krishna will do justice to this demon and then he started insulting everybody he started saying to yudhishthir maharaj oh we thought you are a great king but you are doing such foolish acts i don't uh, I, i i i deny my uh, surrender to you because um, every king had uh, most of the kings had voluntarily uh, agreed to 
coronate Yudhishthi Maharaj as the uh, undisputed emperor of the entire country. But then Shishupal said, I don't agree to this now. Okay. So then he started insulting everybody. He started insulting Bhima, Arjuna, Lakul, Sadev, everybody in fact, one by one, one by one, one by one. And then he started insulting Krishna again. And then Krishna told him, my dear brother, and Shishupal was Lord Krishna's cousin actually. And then Lord Krishna said to him, my dear brother, be careful. <laughs> you are going to cross the hundred uh, insults. Okay, so your countdown is coming very soon. So be careful. When it comes to hundred, you stop it. And then Shishupal got angry again. He said, oh, what do you think? I fear you. <laughs> See, every time he will stop at 100 and now he's telling, oh, what do you think I fear you? Now, if you don't fear, then why do you stop at 100? Now, you should go on and on and on. But that he doesn't do because he knows Krishna's power. But that day he was so angry. He was so envious. He was so vicious. He forgot the count of his words and he started insulting Krishna back to back to back to back to back. And then Lord Krishna took his Sudarshan Chakra and wiped off his <laughs> his that chopped off his head and he was lying in the ground dead so basically we have to understand that we also have a shishupal inside us yes all these demons they are there inside us that doesn't mean that they didn't exist physically that was there but when i'm saying here that they in, in uh, exist inside us i mean to say that the qualities for which these demons are known they are very much lively existing in us so we need to take care that we do not fall prey to this. Yes, we do not fall prey to this envy. Now, basically what is envy? As I said earlier, it is indirect appreciation. You are appreciating somebody indirectly, right? So, what is the biggest antidote of envy? The biggest antidote of envy is, why not directly go and appreciate the person? Yes. So, suppose you give an exam, alright? And you wanted to come first. Suppose or your son or daughter <laughs> but then what happened you didn't come first you came second so then you feel oh my god if only somehow i can prove that this person is not that good or if i could prove that this person did some unfair means to get that rank yes or it can happen that in a company corporate <laughs> that we are wait we are waiting for our boss to give us some promotion but then oh that person is promoted why not me <laughs> what is there in that person that is not there in me why can't my senior authority see my greatness how great i am yes why can't they see it why are they only seeing that person yes so the biggest antidote of envy is instead of harboring that malice inside us we should directly go and appreciate the person Yes, we should directly go and say, man, you have done a great job. Because when you are envious of somebody, you are already appreciating the person. Appreciation means you are acknowledging their uh, goodness. Yes, that's what appreciation is. You are acknowledging their greatness. So you are already acknowledging. <laughs> that is why you are envious. Because unless that person is great in some way or greater than you, you will not be envious, right? So instead of being envious inside, we can directly go and say to the person, great job, good. And we can also go and ask to the person what they did to achieve this. Yes. So suppose somebody is a topper in the class. Yes. And you are kind of envious. Oh, why is this person the topper? Why not me? <laughs> then what happens? Instead of sitting and trying to gossip about him, him or her, whoever, then you must go and directly ask him, Sir, how are you the topper? Madam, please tell me. <laughs> you may not ask that why are you the topper or how are you the topper. You can ask that, oh, how do you make notes? Yes. How, how, how do you write? Do you write what the professor says or you interpret it in your own words? If you interpret it in your own words, then how do you systematically put those things? Yes, inside. Then you will understand that this person is a topper because he deserves it yes so then your envy will uh, will reduce it may not go away completely but humble yourself and say that my dear sir i want uh, <coughs> help from you because when you don't ask help then what happens that person will still be the topper okay you will not be able to surpass him 
or her but you will be destroying yourself inside yes you will create terror inside yourself you will create disharmony inside yourself and because of that you will torment torture you will kill yourself so first is in you directly appreciate the person you go and say great job man good work done perfect you deserve it then you ask okay how do you do this then what happens it pinches the ego yes then you will be like oh why should i ask this person nah, i have my own techniques my rules but if you have it then why are you not being able to be the topper and there's no problem if you're not the topper but it's if it's bogging you 24 hours i want to be the topper 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 my goodness then instead of sitting and harboring malice in your heart we can go and ask the person so what's your secret please tell me <laughs> okay and then the person may uh, share something which is very personal to him or he may not share yes then whatever he shares we can take from that yes so first is we appreciate the person because we are already appreciating the person yes because that's why we are envious because he has something which we don't have and then we go and ask that what's the secret of your success yes so this is how we can uh, practically deal uh, with envy and the last thing i would say is you have to be very careful in identifying the different shishupals who are in your friend circle in your family yes in your relatives in your closed ones because they say you are the average of five people who you associate with should i repeat you are the average of five people who you associate with if you associate with a drunkard what will happen no comments <laughs> if you associate with a person who watches pornography you will end up doing the same if you an, uh, associate with a person who uh, the only thing they do is discuss about the opposite sex have you met people especially uh, some uh, friends i have uh, both boys and girls nobody being left here the only thing they will do is they will discuss oh this boy did this this girl did this where's the rest of the world man <laughs> okay so if you are also having these kind of people in your friend circle yes or suppose there's some relative who is always like oh how did that uh, your uncle son how did uh, he go ahead I think you should have gone. So stay away from those people who fuel this envy inside you. Yes, that is very, 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 very important. If you don't do that, then even if you try to be free from envy inside, then you will realize that, oh, these people are not letting me be free. Yes. So that means we have to stay away from people who keep gossiping. Should I repeat? We have to stay away from people who keep gossiping all the time, 24 hours. Who is having an affair with whom? Who got the promotion? How? My God. Come on, man. <laughs> How is in the universe is it going to affect your life? What happened to whom? Yes, that, that only happens when you are completely headless, goalless, directionless without any purpose in life you don't know why you are getting up in the morning you are just getting up so then what you do go to the office and start bitching about others yes that's what you do very well <laughs> so we have to make sure that we do not stay in the company of these people otherwise we will totally be destroyed yes and then we also have to understand at a spiritual level that ultimately everything belongs to god yes so there's nothing for me to get in this world yes envy is basically what it's a product of a complex of entitlement yes it's like Duryodhana basically Duryodhana was always envious of the Pandavas although he had much more than what the Pandavas had no, materially physically but he always thought that oh they have more na? I want more yes so that doesn't work out so we have to stay away from those people who also behave like Shishupal or who are always criticizing others have you met some people the only thing that comes out from their mouth is garbage. Yes. I he did this. She did this. No. How's your job going? Yeah, job is like shit. It's like garbage. I don't want to go to work. So much negativity. Yes. So then what happens? You also start behaving like that because they send up birds of the same feather flock together. <laughs> so we need to make sure that we distance ourselves from these people and focus on our spiritual journey yes we do our mantras we visit the satsang we visit the holy people we visit our gurus yes and then we hear from them and we understand that actually 
God is the proprietor of everything, yes. And he is the most well-wishing friend of everybody. That's what Lord Krishna says in the Gita. That Suridam Sarva Bhutanam Gyatva Mam Shantim Rutchati. One who knows this peace formula that God is the enjoyer, controller and proprietor of everything. He attains peace. Sa Shantim Rutchati. He attains ultimate peace. So that means when we know that we are not so important in this world, yes. Not that we are not important but we are not that important as we think ourselves to be so when we realize this then we realize that okay ultimately everything belongs to god yes ultimately everything everything even that award which that person is getting is also belonging to god as they say that give god the nobel prize because all the nobel laureates are made by god yes so when we realize this ultimate truth as they say in sanskrit na param satya then we will not be envious of anybody anymore Yes, of course, easier said than done, but that's the process. You have to start and you are here now and then after some time you reach to a good place. Okay, that is how this happens actually. So, merely not associating with bad people is not going to solve your problem. Merely going and appreciating the person is also not going to solve the problem. And also merely going and asking the person, okay, how do you did this? Yes, and pinching your ego is also not going to solve the problem. So, apart from those three techniques... The fourth technique is much, 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 much more powerful and the most important that we have to become more and more spiritual. Yes, then we realize that it's okay if I don't get the first prize <laughs> because I am finding happiness in other things now. Yes, in reading the scriptures, meeting holy people and traveling to holy places. That's it. How does it matter? As in Punjabi, they say, ki fark panda. I don't know if that's correct or not, but I have heard some of my Punjabi friends saying like that. All right. So that is it from my side. Four steps, four ways or four techniques, four tips to deal with envy, jealousy. Yes. So that is it from my side. If you like this video, then click the thumbs up and share it with somebody who also is a victim of this or wants to come out of this disease. All right. So, there you go. If you want a consultation, then please approach me through my website. And if you're new, then please subscribe. Okay. And that is it from my side. And remember always, God is there with you all the time. Pray to him and he will help you come out of this envy. Yes. Bye-bye. See you.